Shalom, everybody. This is a uh, coronavirus video. This is an opinion piece, strictly my opinion. Um, today is a big... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but February the 13th, 2020. It's an inflection point in history because for the longest time, although I've been critical, I've been critical of the Chinese communist government and I'm not justifying anything they've done. I'm not saying they did a good job, you know, barring people in their houses and kidnapping people and cremations and all that. But at the same time, if they didn't take draconian measures, there's a right way to do that and there's a wrong way to do it. But overall, you look at the draconian measures that they, that they undertook, they were able to, in my estimation, and history books will look, at this, uh, history will look at the situation and say that China actually slowed down the spread of the virus. Whatever your opinions are and whatever the cause of how it came out, how it leaked, how it was unleashed on, on humanity, the fact remains that of all the countries on the planet, it started in China. And for good reason, because if it was any other country which was very liberal and were not able to lock down their citizens and force quarantine them, this virus would have spread at least twice as fast. So we're looking at the uh, timeline of events. The timeline of events is such. November. 2019, there was a, it's called patient zero, the first person who was infected. As we know, the incubation period is not 14 days. It's not even 24 days. It's more like 30. So as much as 40 days, just to be safe, let's just say 40, 30, 40, let's just average it that way. So from that first person being infected in November, they remained asymptomatic and they finally perished. They succumbed to the disease in December 2019. That sparked more infections, more people uh, being infected because it had spread, because they had not realized just how serious this was. And it wasn't a regular, you know, respiratory syndrome. It is a biological warfare weapon designed to kill stealthily, not overtly. And so you have that 30-day period from November to December, and then from December to January, you can see just how quickly the body count had piled up and the infection count had piled up. And now we're not even a month from January we're almost a month from there, and you can see just how exponentially it's, it has grown. You look at the rest of the world, and it's only where China was in December, where they only had a few, you know, a handful of infected and a couple of deaths, not too many deaths. That's where the rest of the world is right now. So I'm telling everybody, you know, prepare yourselves for the next two, three months, we're going to most likely be like China, but maybe even worse because at least China and North Korea, they locked down their countries. They imposed a forced quarantine, whereas a lot of our countries like Canada, for example, it's free for all. You just, we're too afraid to offend anybody. So it's either you trade your life in or you offend somebody, you take your pick. Personally, I don't care if you're hurt your feelings. I'm Asian. I don't care if you wear a mask. 
Because I know you're not afraid of me. You're afraid of a disease. That's what you're afraid of, is the disease behind, you know, the country of origin. It has nothing to do with Chinese people or ethnic Chinese. It has to do with flights coming from China. Flights. Could be any ethnicity, but the fact is it's flights coming from China. That's all I had to say about this. Uh, you know, the crap has hit the fan. It's just going to start to spread. And you can look at the various cruises, Princess Diamond and places like that, where you can see just how deadly this virus is. There was even the story, the, the uh, case where uh, the virus is reportedly being spread through uh, ventilation ducts. It's traveling through pipes. You don't even have to be in close proximity to the people who are infected. You just have to be in the same building and it'll spread through the ventilation ducts. It spreads through the air, people. It's That's why they were spraying China, Wuhan. They're spraying their whole city with that, that uh, was the spray. The last thing I wanted to say is, was this. You know, for the longest time, the media, especially the mainstream media, has been reporting that this virus is, is like a, let's say it's a fox. You know, it's one fox. So what are you going to do? You're going to guard your pets. You're going to guard your, your kids from this fox at nighttime. But if you're calling it a fox, but then you see your neighbor taking precautions, in this instance, China, taking precautions, you know, building a fence, they're stocking up on bazookas and nuclear weapons and, and night vision, and they, you know, they, they have, uh, or they got like guard dogs, they got guard bears, they have shotguns, AR-15s, they have, uh, you know, level 5 body armor. Like, that's not a fox. Those aren't precautions you would take against a fox. Those are precautions you take against not just one T-Rex, but maybe an army of T-Rexes. And that's what we have here with the coronavirus. It's like an army of T-Rexes there that are invisible. They're invisible and they can travel through the air. And they can go through pipes, ventilation pipes, and they can survive on surfaces for who knows how long. Please stock up on food for at least, I'm going to say, well, time will tell, but I mean, China's been going through this now for how many months? A couple months, and it's not even at the peak. Just to be safe, I'd prepare personally, I would prepare at least six months minimum to as much as a year, maybe two years of food so you don't have to go out and risk being exposed. It's too risky, people. Don't take your chances. Our governments may not force a quarantine, but we have to self-quarantine and protect ourselves because the governments are not protecting us. They're not even, they're not even informing us the bare minimum, should they should inform us and tell us the truth. Be transparent that it's a bioweapon. You know, people aren't going to lose their minds and just, you know, uh, panic, panic, panic. There is going to be, yes, there'll be people who will panic, but at, at the same time, give your give people more credit than than us just being, uh, you know, fear mongers or, or causing panic. People are going to make preparations, you know, the government is stocking up on food. I'm sure they're stocking up on food too, just covertly. You know, Department of Defense in America, they're they're uh, buying up rations. The uh, I forgot how you say it, but the emergency, I think MRA or some kind of acronym with an M in there. Or these rations, MRA, I think. 
military ration something. MRE. Yeah, mil MRE is the acronym. That was a telltale sign when uh, one of the manufacturers for InfoWars' uh, uh, emergency food supplier was contacted by a DOD to supply them food. That was a telltale sign. That was how many weeks ago now. That showed that they knew just how they knew what the situation was. Now we have Beijing declaring martial law. We like China's far gone now. They are far gone now. The alarm just went off. That's significant because I'm telling you, the alarm just went off on our planet. Not just in China, but the rest of the planet. We have to take notice. Coronavirus isn't just going to stick to China. It's, it's already claimed the life in Japan. Claimed the life in the, the Philippines. Claimed the life... In Hong Kong, it's only the beginning. So what must we do besides prepare physically? We gotta prepare spiritually as well. What does that mean? It means we gotta treat each other with, with, with respect, with love. We'll take care of each other, take care of ourselves. You know, live healthy, eat a plant-based diet. Not just because, you know, some kind of vegan mil militant said that, because I'm not that. It's for your health. It's to protect your immune system. Plant-based diet will purify your blood. And pure blood that's purified will give you the best chance against coronavirus. Eat a lot of antioxidants, such as blueberries and other sources, that's going to give you a, a better chance to fight this. Get seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Don't don't sacrifice your sleep because you're going to sacrifice your immune system. It'll be half as as strong. But if you get enough sleep and you're at hundred percent, you'll give yourself a fighting chance. You know, exercise at least fifteen minutes a day. Cardio, resistance training. You know, do something that makes you laugh or, or watch something that makes you laugh. It's important you, you know, increase your mood, the positive moods, because, you know, laughter is the best medicine. That's exactly the truth. Pray, Bible study. Study your Bibles, you know. Get right with God. That's the number one thing of, above all, above all the things I've said. Because even if we make the preparations, if God or, or Yah, as he's known in the Bible, yod Hey vav Hey. if he's not on your side, it's for nothing. It's really for nothing. And yeah, you could save your life and you could live on and survive catastrophe after a catastrophe, but what, what is your life worth? And what is uh, the rest of your years worth if you aren't right with God? Because you're going to die eventually from something. But you want to be able to reserve your spot in his kingdom where you won't die ever again you're going to live forever and it's not you know just self-preservation you're actually doing it because you love him and you have to realize that he loves you and that's why he gave us his scriptures the torah he gave us the bible including the new testament it shows us how to live how to treat each other and life isn't just about us and keeping ourselves alive it's about taking care of each other, and that's why I'm doing this video, to share this with you. That we're not in it alone, we're in it this together. And we should pool our resources, if need be. We pool our knowledge, just like I'm doing now. All the things I've been, I've been tracking this since January the 26th. Every day, on top of the news. Mainstream news, alternative news. I look at both, and I can see just how much misinformation is being spread even on both sides. But when you get down to the facts, it's better to, to lean towards the cautious side. Anyway, that's all.